What a wild ride this has been. Well, that's a very blunt question. Advance is lying. Thank <laughs> you. 
evening, Alex. It's Boozman here, your boss. While you're powering up and getting the adverts loaded, I thought I should just tell you that we've had one of those public information films from the government, and it's mandatory that you play it. You still have free choice for the other two, so read those tape labels carefully, but make sure you play the advance ad advert, preferably at the second break. Right, that's the lot. Have a great show. Oh, how's it going with Steve? Why are men such pricks? That yeah, well, eh? Apparently he has a complicated relationship with his fish. No. Sorry, are you saying he chose his imaginary friend in the sky over you? I don't know why I talk to you. You're probably just a really awful date. Ten seconds, everybody. Like I said, all of you. Did your personality accidentally slip out? Pricks. Going in five, <laughs> four, three. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. And I'm Megan Wolf. Our main stories tonight. Uncooperative. A mysterious symbol has appeared overnight on thousands of buildings throughout the capital. Tonight, in an exclusive live interview with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, I'll be asking what this mysterious symbol might mean. After three months of record-breaking approval ratings, could this be the daring first move of a silent resistance movement? And what would that mean as we go into the future? We shall overcome. Trapped in Dante's taint for more than a month now, doctors Ingrid Sforsborg and Horgensbord and David Wong announced today that they're considering two possible options. With two of the finest minds in science working together, hopes are still high for the eventual return of the team to dry land. While both options are still on the table, support seems to be growing for a daring escape attempt. If a group of fungus experts can't fix the most advanced craft ever conceived by man, then who can? Bloodbath avoided. As the last Mr. Snugglehogs is found and destroyed, we ask, how could we have been so blind? Fortunately, this station wisely chose not to advertise Mr. Snugglehugs, and the subsequent disappointing sales turned out to be a miracle, as only seven children were horribly injured by the lethal toy. How much worse could it have been? Thankfully, we'll never know. Questions have been raised about the government's judgment, with Prime Minister Peter Clement forced to apologise this morning for seeming to endorse a self-combusting plaything in this publicity shot taken last Christmas. Let's hope his knees recovers quickly. Table for two. Johnny Hamsleeves and Tiffany L'Amour were spotted having a private moment out at lunch today. The popular couple have certainly been on a roller coaster since they started dating late last year. And this image is sure to place them firmly back in the tabloids. Could we be on the verge of the biggest celebrity wedding since professional wrestler Randy Grizzlenuts McFridge married his longtime tag team partner Tina Tiny Hands last year in a wrestling ring made entirely of cake? Is this one celebrated role model about to become the bad boy of sport? And onwards and upwards. In an attempt to put the Mr. Snugglehugs disaster behind them, Rimington's Fist CEO Sophia Rimington today announced a brand new product that already has the markets buzzing with interest. This groundbreaking product came as quite a shock when it was revealed earlier today, though its critics are skeptical that the young CEO can fulfill her promises. Described as a breakthrough far ahead of its time, the male contraceptive pill is heralding a sexual revolution. Its fans are celebrating the fact that men can finally take equal responsibility for contraception. But others have expressed concerns over its safety and side effects. With that exclusive Prime Ministerial interview coming up later. And our very own Patrick Bannon live at the first annual Sports Board Final. You won't want to miss a second of tonight's National, National Nightly News. News. Tonight. While advance is certainly proving popular with the majority of the country, who have seen their wealth and standards of living increase considerably, for some, the transition has not been as pleasant. That's right, Megan. The formerly aristocratic members of our society have had to make major adjustments to come to terms with the new regime. Robin Short is in suburbia investigating rumours that these previously privileged people may be planning some kind of protest. Robin? 
Thanks, Megan. I'm here in moderate hatchings to talk to Wentworth and Penelope Somerset Bentley, who were relocated to the house you see behind me after advance passed the Assets and Wealth Act on their first day in office. Tell me, how are you settling into your new lives? Well, quite frankly, Robin, we're not settling in at all. Our neighbours are white waters. Oh, it's simply untenable. I hope you'll forgive my language, but it's as steaming as a Wednesday hatch basket with too much spatting. Steady now, Penelope. Sorry, Robin, my sister's under a lot of pressure. She had to dress herself this morning and she still hasn't quite recovered, Robin. <laughs> my goodness, that must have been quite a shock. She really struggles with ribbons, Robin. Well, at least you've been rehoused in a nice big house. Big house? This grubby little gadda spatch only has one staircase. And the breakfast room and the dining room are the same bloody place. Imagine that, having all one's grub in one room. What room, Robin? So what would you say to the people that feel that your family has had it far too easy for far too long and that these redistributions are both fair and just? I hardly think we've had it easy for fussel's sake. Only one of our swimming pools was even heated. But realistically, what can you do? Well, you've asked the right bloody question, Robin. Thank you, Wentworth. I wasn't the youngest ever editor of the Swinstead Middle School Inquirer for no reason. I think our toilet butler was from Swinstead. Dear George, oh, I wonder what happened to him. <gasps> yes. I remember! <laughs> Daddy tried to shoot him in the buttocks and he got up into the woods. Oh, good times. Yeah, that's probably my last happy memory, Robin. Tragic, but what can you do? We will rise and rebel. We wage war on our revolting rulers with righteous words and rebellious writings. Our best guess in our quest for redress is to divest our breasts in an undressed bare chest protest. Oh, what's that? Daddy! Daddy, it's Daddy! Daddy! Please don't do that. We can't show this on the news. It's so fun. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, he gets that for me, you know. Not rude. Sorry, Daddy. We want the world to realise we won't roll over and run away. We will revolt. We will rise again. Yes, we bloody well will. Spaff and piff up. Oh, 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 as this embryonic oh, protest oh, movement takes one of the top things, <laughs> it's back here I'll in the studio. Um, I'm Robin Short, struggling surreptitiously in moderate hatchings. Okay, well, Thanks, Robin. Who is Robin? Let's get the oh, 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 I like the way we do things in this country. But as I'm sure you're aware, Jeremy, this country is becoming a very different place. Yes, but seriously, who's going to run around naked in our weather? Oh, hopefully not you, Jeremy. Yes, well, there wouldn't be enough canvas for the slogans. <laughs> uh, when we come back, our very own Patrick Bannon will be live from the sports board finals. Stick around, you won't want to miss it. We'll be back after these messages. One minute back. Oh, sorry, I'm busting. Oh! She's funny. Yes, I know. I think it's very good. She wants your job. She's not going to do it. Why is it raining on my desk? Alex, over. We're getting reports in that naked protesters might try and spoil the sports board final by waving their fleshy bits about. Try and make sure you don't broadcast it. It's 6pm for God's sake. No one wants to see fannies on the news. Bozeman out. That's what it says. Yes, I understand that, but I always say welcome back. 
I think we should just keep it as it is. Well, of course you do. I've got one hack line. What's that supposed to mean? I didn't write it, Jeremy. That's all right, fine. Jenny, there's something wrong with the auto cue. Ten seconds. Oh, I just felt a drip again. Have they not fixed this? You want to see us fry? It's good for the ratings. Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. I'm Megan Wolf. Coming up later, we'll be speaking to the Prime Ministers about their exciting new healthcare facilities, transition centres. Nice to see you. Wasting away in the chair. But, you know, while I'm covering this bullshit, I mean, uh, a real waste of my talent. Um, you know, I could put a tie on, I could look a bit scruffy, I could sit in the chair myself. But no, I'm sports here reporting on the same Patrick? old crap. That's right, Megan, you join me live here for the final of the first annual Sports Board Championship. It's been a hotly contested competition so far. I think it's fair to say these two have been dancing around each other all season. First up, we have Ellie Stryker. She's the more experienced of our two players today. Stryker has got an accuracy of 7, a danger rating of K, and a 12-month driving ban. Stryker's known for her signature move for the Yankee Hamster. And facing her tonight, hoping to prove himself with a career record of 12 outs, 14 finishes, and a divorce pending, is Mr. Wingspun himself, Tommy, the fingernail Harris. Just waiting on the ref now. The slapping ceremony is taking part. Still going on. And, uh, to first. Striker, of course, uh, first to start as she won the trivia Deep round road. earlier on by some margin. Deep road. Uh, Harris, uh, perhaps the, the brawn and not the brain. Play, Stupid. Eddie Striker. Eddie Striker. Nice start there from Striker. She's determined not to let the nerve show. Uh, not after last time. On to Mr. Harris now, Tommy. On to Mr. Harris now, Tommy. Using his arm to pick up the ball. Not a bad shot there from, uh, from Harris. Back to Stryker for shot number three. All right. She's gone to sort of throwing it under her legs. Uh, not bad, if you ask me. Better away from To Harris. Bit of business with the ref, but it got sorted out. Back to Harris now. A ball in the hand is worth two in the bush. Football. Move back. I'd say that's fair, but what do I know? Oh, no, and Harris is not going to be happy with that. So really not a good start there for Tommy Harris in round one. We can only hope that round two treats him a bit better. Uh, but first, of course, after the argument with the ref section, it's time to change ends. Now we have the ceremonial changing of the ends. And of course, now they go back to the starting positions, as that makes sense. Striker giving it large. Second round, Harris. Winter round two now with Harris. OK, we seem to have some sort of streak on the pitch. I apologise if we broadcast any of that stuff. Um, she appears to have slogans across her breasts and arse. Um, uh, try and ignore all of that security. I'm sure we're going to take them out as soon as possible. Uh, apologise if uh, we, we broadcast any of that. As I said, um, we're going to get the situation resolved as soon as possible. Um, uh, they're trying to carry on play, but it's probably a bit difficult, and I'm struggling to follow. Um, because uh, it's quite an eyesore, and um, women's bodies... Yeah, all right, great. OK, so back into round two now, uh, and Harry's absolutely determined to close that massive gap. Eddie Stryker. No, it's just some of the tightest play I've seen ever. Harris. Harris. And was that the fitted thumbscrew? We haven't seen that of the heat. What a brilliant move. Back to Stryker. And we know what that means, ladies and gentlemen. That is, of course, the ground sound. <laughs> Excellent bit of play here on both sides of the bucket. I don't know about you at home, but I'm finding the technical master in display here absolutely blooming jaw dropping. The ref has spotted something in uh, Harris's neck or head. And Harris is having an absolute shocker. What a miserable start there in for Tommy sport. Harris. In uh, but he is a late bloomer, of course, for said that. And after all, it is a game of two halves. Uh, four rounds and seven subgenres. But now, of course, it's time for the half-time show. Sponsored by Wimington Switch. On my whistle, on my whistle. Nice piece of music here to start the half-time show. OK, another posh protest that lives on the court here. We can only apologise for that. Um, we'll do our best to shield you from having to look directly at it. Um, is uh, running around here with his genitals uh, on display for all to see. Um, 
and uh, ruining what was shaping up to be quite the dance interlude there. Um, now he's thrusting himself in, uh, in Harris's face, security's on it, uh, and the bucket's been knocked over! I cannot stand it when the bucket gets knocked over. Um, hopefully he'll get taken out now. Um, uh, genitals flying around for all to see. Um, really, if you ask me, not Sunday morning television. Um, and uh, out of there, uh, hopefully uh, taken away, never to be seen again. Uh, final pose, final poses. <laughs> Moonboy cannot be in the final pose. <laughs> and a lovely finish there on both sides of the bucket. I wouldn't like to call that one. Uh, and as we head into round three, I'd love to know what's going on in these two players' heads. Uh, but unfortunately, because of science, we can't. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not bad. Well, that ball boy's giving me the eye all the whole day. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, striker there, not a great start. Um, she looks a bit flustered, I think, after all that swinging around. Back to Harris here. God, what I wouldn't give to be that ball. Am I right, ladies? Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris. And it dribbled down his arm, which is actually a really good move, because, of course, if it dribbles down his arm and goes on the floor, it's not going in the bucket. Back to striker. <laughs> and striker's gone for the animal bonus there, but, of course, perhaps... And yes, Harris has counted with a tiny bell. That is wonderful play. Of course, we've seen that before. Look at her face. She is absolutely gutted. What a mud. Um, that could have been the clincher. What a massive shame. Um, Harris receives possession now. Uh, Harris to serve now. Um, Harris, of course, undefeated by Kestrel in his last four battles. So, um, here we go. Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris. That's all right. That's all right. Not bad there. He threw it quite far away from him, which is quite a good Very idea. Contact. Very no. clever there. <laughs> Perhaps a little contact, a caution from the referee, who's being, if you ask me, a little bit harsh. Ellie Stryker. And she's let the nerves get to her. What the hell was that? You hate to see it, don't you? You cannot believe it. Oh, for God's sake. OK, like, I mean, this is a mess now. I don't, I don't know what I can be doing about this. Um, uh, I mean, there's sort of uh, uh, breasts and genitals for all to see. Um, I mean, there's only so much I can do. Um, they, they're full of everywhere, aren't they? Uh, all right, I'll, I'll try and carry on. Um, the players are trying to carry on, but, of course, it's difficult because, um, because these protesters are... Hopefully we can get them taken off soon so we can carry on with the match. Oh, oh, hello, hello, okay, hello. So what's going on here? Yes, yes. We want our money. Yes, very good. Take them away. Can be. Bloody wasters. Absolute wasters. Oh, jog on. This is the mine round. It's an absolute bloody... OK, and now we're going to go into the final round. Um, and, of course, as it's a Tuesday, the final round is a mime round. Who could believe it? Who could believe it? Uh, nice imaginary shot there from uh, Harris. It really could go in there at this point. Um, really high-level play here from two bats with juggernauts of the sport. Hold. Uh, the bucket getting moved back to its proper place. About time, if you ask me. She's uh, juggling it around from her hand, so interesting. And she's uh, put it in her mouth like as if it was an egg, and now she's um, and she's spat it out. She did the egg spit, so uh, a wonderful move there, quite late on uh, from striker. But she's in it to win it. On it like a car bonnet. Uh, Tommy Harris here having a bit of beef. And he's peeling it as if it were a banana, which is an interesting move. Um, not sure if he had any potassium or what's going on today with us. And he's trying to have the banana with the ball. What a fantastic move there from Harris. Unfortunately, that is the end. What a pathetic. There we go, Jeremy. That is over. How can he look his eight year old son in the face tonight? What a lump. Uh, we just have to wait for the referee now to announce it to make sure it is all official. Mm -hmm. Contestants in, please. And the winner of the first annual Sports Board Championship is... Everyone! OK, the ref has the once again.
again a win for everyone, uh, including me as my 15th win in the Sports Board Championship. Um, I'm going to be celebrating tonight with my wife and children. Uh, another wonderful victory for me. Uh, here come the on-site security to collect their medals, uh, their sixth and seventh respectively. Um, and thanks again for watching the uh, Sports Board Championships. Uh, what more is there to say? I'm Patrick Bannon. Um, looking forward to celebrating tonight. Um, and all I all is left to say, Jeremy, is back to you in the studio. Patrick Ballon there at an extraordinary final. Historic sports board, Jeremy. I didn't know you were a fan. Oh, yeah, I can wrench a doubler with the best of them, I'll have you know. I certainly wouldn't bet against you. <laughs> when we come back, <laughs> I'll be talking live with Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement, who <laughs> apparently have a big announcement you wouldn't want to miss. That's coming up after these messages. One minute back. Fucking microphone shot me. What? Fucking microphone just dropped me. Where's that sound guy? Everything okay? Oh, the mics are just trying to kill us now, apparently. But you'll be fine. You're unshockable. I'm immune to your cheap flattery. I'm wearing. You down. Let's celebrate the nation's most well known and best loved pieces of hardware with your copy of the Joy of Screws. Every week, you'll add another. Potion again. Just heard from the chaps in maintenance. The storm is laying havoc with the electrics, and you might notice the odd spark. Nothing to worry about. Happens all the time. Dave got shocked into a coma last year, but he was up and at him the next day. Anyway, our compensation package is parallel to none. Good luck. Boozman out. So sorry about all these buckets. We uh, seem to have sprung a leak. Well, uh, several, actually. We're going to need a whole new lining up there. Triple C. We'll look into it, Minister. It's so good to see you again. Miss Wolf, your star seems to be in the ascendant. It's a great time to be alive. Too bloody right. Peter Clement. Megan Wolf. My, but that's a firm handshake you've got there. She's tougher than she looks. <laughs> <laughs> Am I here? Uh, here, with Mr Clement on your left. Right you are, pet. <laughs> You'll see, Dan. Ten seconds, everybody. No, mine's fine. Have you had a little accident? She's a cow. Five, four, three. Welcome back. I am delighted to be joined by Prime Ministers Julia Salisbury and Peter Clement. Welcome to the National Nightly News, Prime Ministers. Oh, please, it's just Julia and Peter. We don't believe much in titles. It doesn't seem very advanced. We're delighted to be here. Well, firstly, I should ask how you feel about the graffiti that's been springing up across the capital. Should we be worried? Oh, no. No, you definitely shouldn't be worried. Well, not unless you've got a fatal paint allergy anyway. But, yes, it does seem there are still some people we haven't been able to help. Mm. You know, whinges most. You know, people who have yet to benefit from the many advantages of the new future. And you know, Megan, as my old mum used to say, there are some pissants who just don't know how to be happy. We're working hard to reach these people, find out what they're angry about and how we can help. The door to my government is always open. So much dripping on me. But we didn't come here to talk about what may yet turn out to be some alternative arts project. Which we no doubt will have funded. When we want to talk to the nation about something far more mm. exciting. Yes, your office briefed us that you have an announcement to make, but they were being surprisingly secretive about it. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Megan. Oh, OK, it's not usually how it works, but... <laughs> what scares you? I mean, really scares you? Ah, uh, oh... It's um... death, Pat. She's talking about death. We're all afraid of our deaths. It's part of being human. Sorry, are you saying that advance have cured death? <laughs> that would be a vote winner. Yep, that was definitely a drop there. But while we may not have cured death, we hope we found a way to make it much less scary. And much less painful and much less expensive. Look, which is me close up camera? Oh, sorry, yes, it's, it's coming forward. When I was 13, me mam came and got me from school. He had to go to the hospital. My granddad, he'd collapsed that morning, so we'd all to say our goodbyes. And I went in to see him, he were all frail and pale. And I, I was scared because I'd only seen him the week before, and he'd been fit as fiddle. And he said to me, Peter, he said, it's the right time. I don't ever want to be a burden to the people I love. 
Was that the last time you saw him? Nope. Three days later, he were back home. He lived with us for nine miserable years after that. He had to be fed with a rubber spoon. He had a commode. So he'd just take a shit right there in the lounge while we were watching football. He wouldn't even wait till half time. That sounds... Oh, um... it, it was awful. It was awful for us. But, and this is the point. It was awful for him. He could see it was destroying me, man, watching him slowly fade away. And he would beg her to turn off his breathing equipment at night, but she couldn't. Or she wouldn't. It were a crime, you see. And she didn't want to lose the children, as well as her old man. No family should have to suffer like Peter's did. And now, no family will have to. The health service is today opening the first of 300 new transition centres. The transition centres will handle everything for your last days. The legal, financial, medical and emotional costs are all catered for and paid for by the government. So even the poorest citizen gets to pass on with dignity when they choose. And that choice is important. Yes. This is a service only for people who choose it. For people who feel they run their course and don't want to burden themselves or their families with a slow, long, humiliating decline. just given me electric job. Are you OK? I, I, I don't know. I think it fried my asshole. Are we still on the air, Peter? No, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. My apologies. Oh. Are, are you not worried that this new the system might be open to abuse? In what way? <laughs> sorry, sorry, I've got a to get. Can I get a little bit of help here, please? <laughs> that the older generation might feel somewhat... Jesus, I lost your face, That one was massive. Right, no, this bastard's coming off. That, uh, sorry, that the, that the older generation oh. might feel somewhat coerced. <laughs> coerced into spending their final days eating gourmet food and drinking fine wine and luxury spas and gardens. Look, I am perfectly capable of... Oh, my grandmother with a rotting twat by Prime that. Minister, oh, please watch your language. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh for God's sake. sake! Don't get yourself sorted out. Right. We're launching a government information film tonight. It should tell your viewers everything they need to know. <laughs> you really do move at a breathless pace. It's hard to believe you've yet to be in office a year. Oh, Megan. <laughs> We're only getting started. <laughs> and on that note, thank you both so much for being here. Jeremy. Right, yes, um, that's all we have time for tonight. Our thank yous go out to our guests. Um, congratulations to all the winners at the Sports Board Final, and we'll see you tomorrow night at the same time. My name is Jeremy Donaldson. If you can, have a peaceful night. And we're out. Good job, everybody. So they just... Why the strength in your body? I don't suppose there's any way this could be a, a good thing. Well, it's for my nephew to have me transition the moment I start the league. Well, that's what it says. Yes, I understand that, but I... Yes. You want to see us fry? It's good for the ratings. Five, four...
So Mr. Harris now, Tommy. Changing off the aims. Harris, okay. We seem to have some sort of streak on the pitch. I apologise if we broadcast any of that stuff. Um, she appears to have slogans across her breasts and arse. Um, uh, try and ignore all of that security. Good evening, I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawson. Our main headlines tonight.